Cheers guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're gonna to continue our series on Get Ready Now. And this is a series where I will take you with me on my journey of doing all of those preps that I have been delaying on doing. And this video, unlike the last one, is not gonna be terribly sexy or probably not very popular. But I identified a gap in some of my field cards and I thought this would be a good time to do an update video on what field cards are, how I use them, why I have them, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to make these. So if you guys are looking for reference material that you can consult in an emergency without any access to uh, basically grid tied services, stick around. Okay, so let's take a look at what field cards are, and this is just my personal definition. A field card for me is some small piece of information that I'm able to consult as a memory aid when needed. And typically I'll put things that either one, I can't remember, uh, maybe a set of instructions, like a standard operating procedure, like programming my radio. In other cases, it may be reference material. As an amateur radio operator, there are lots of different frequencies and bands that I have access to. And sometimes I can't really always remember where the start of my privileges begins and where they end. I have a lot of different radios as well. And occasionally I'll forget how to program a frequency into memory for repeater use. Uh, a couple of other things I'll look at is lists of different frequencies and repeaters. And then also, you know, outside of amateur radio, I have basically old school contacts. So when I was growing up, cell phones didn't exist. Uh, we had landlines at the house. We had to use pay phones. Pagers were basically my go-to tech when I was in high school. But uh, I knew close to a hundred phone numbers and now, I probably know my phone number, my wife's phone number, my boss's phone number, and the first phone number I had as a kid. That is it. So in the case where I may lose my phone, maybe it's damaged, I also keep a set of contacts. We'll get into that in a little bit here. But basically, it's a lightweight way for me to have reference material that I need when I'm in the field or in urban environment. Uh, when I don't necessarily have access to maybe the full manual on how to program my radio, or maybe I've lost my phone and don't have access to my contact lists. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at these and I'll show you how I make them because this is an incredible tool, especially when we laminate them uh, because they do give us a bit of weatherproofing and they'll be perfect for emergency scenarios. So let's take a look at some of the gear we're gonna to need to make this, and it's pretty simple. I have uh, this Scotch laminator. I'll put a link down below. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything if you click through, uh, but it does help support the channel. I have used this for laminating eight and a half by 11 sheets, and then basically all the laminating pouches down to these really small 2.32 uh, inch by 3.7 inch laminating pouches. And this is a hundred pack. This thing is gonna last you a long time, you probably won't even be able to go through all of these, so you might want to get into it with your group. And then to cut down the, um, the cards that we're gonna print out, I just like to have a straight edge and then some type of utility knife to have nice clean lines. So the next thing is how do we actually make these cards? And I actually like to use uh, like PowerPoint software on the Windows side or on the Mac, I'll use Keynote. Lately, I've been using the uh, slides in Google Drive. So if you have a Google account, it's the easiest way to get started. Now, if you're a Buy Me A Coffee member, I'm gonna have a link to all of these templates and you can go to File, Save As, make a copy and do whatever edits you want for personal use. Uh, for everybody else, I'm gonna show you exactly how I create them from scratch. So I've got a handful of cards here. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll start with the HF band plan. And uh, what you'll see here is basically a, a slide and uh, what you really wanna do is make sure you set the page size so that it will work for the business card size laminating pouches. So at least in uh, Google Sheets, if we go to page setup down here, you can actually see I set it to custom and then I set it to 3.7 by 2.32 inches and that is the perfect size for cutting these down. So that's the first thing you need to do. The other thing I like to do is enable the ruler. So we've got the ruler along the top and along the sides. And I'll actually just drop a box so you can uh, drop different types of uh, shapes. And I'll set the shape here to be a dotted line or a dashed line. And the reason for it is so that I have an area to actually cut this down. So everything within the dashed area will actually be part of what we see on the card. Now, the cool thing about this is you can do whatever you want. This is just a 
essentially a PowerPoint slide. So I've got like a little text area here. We can manipulate that. And then I have all of the different uh, operating frequency ranges for general class license. So pretty straightforward. If I want to go and make another card, I can copy it, paste it, and I can make my edit. So I can say this is going to be for my extra class and then go ahead and make some changes. So really straightforward. Uh, so the thought here is uh, at least the Buy Me A Coffee members can go in and uh, they'll have access to this entire list here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the contacts field card. This is gonna be an interesting one. So this is for all of my amateur radio contacts. And this is an example of a list of uh, basically um, operators that are in my closed circle. So one thing I wanna let you guys know in terms of tips, I don't go crazy and put everybody in here. In fact, I try to have exactly one card for each purpose. And if I can't do it with like 10 operators, uh, something has gone horribly wrong. So I'll just put the name, uh, first name, and then the uh, last name, first character. I'll put their call sign and then some notes. So in this case here, like Alice, I know Alice is on WinLink and I know she uses APRS and her uh, SSID is dash seven. So her call sign dash seven. Uh, Bob, for example, he's, in terms of capabilities, he has WinLink, JSA, FL Digi, and he actually has two APRS SSIDs. So this just goes down. And then Charlie, for example, we can tell he's a local guy. I've got the um, simplex calling frequency on two meters, the simplex calling frequency on 70 centimeters, uh, 446.00, and then the Daisy Mountain repeater. So uh, I use these as aids to say, hey, where are these operators typically hanging out? Is it on HF? If it's on HF, what mode are they on? Um, if they're local, things of that nature. And it could also be pretty freeform. You can see here, like I've got Ethan and I have room for a 10 digit phone number and also email address. Uh, other contacts, I'm starting to get into DMR and this is an area that's new to me. We're gonna do a DMR uh, basic series coming up because that's another area that I want to get ready now. And I'll take you guys along uh, with me. But again, I've got the operator here, their call sign, their DMR ID, and then the talk groups. So you can change this and customize this based on your needs. This is just how I like to format it. Family contacts, I found this to be incredibly valuable because I can't remember everybody's phone number. So I try to have a mix of what are all of my out-of-state contacts, uh, contacts that are in the state but farther out and some that are very close. And in general, I only do one page of this or one card because I'm pretty sure that all of those people can contact the other person. So chances are unlikely that I'm gonna strike out 10 times uh, trying to contact a family member that can relay a message for me. Next up, neighbors. So we've got dogs, for example, sometimes we'll go on a trip and we've had our uh, well, for example, uh, or holding tank dump water. And they called us and we were out of town. It would be nice to be able to have a list of all the neighbors to say, hey, can you go check in on the pups? Uh, do you see suspicious activity at the house? And uh, we've made friends with all of the neighbors uh, in this area and it's really nice to have a backup uh, for those. Mutual assistance, this is a slightly different group. Uh, I'm starting to build or I have been building relationships with people that are like-minded and uh, they're not part of my super core like family circle or really close neighbors, but they're people that I have a relationship and we're willing to exchange skills. So I'll put their phone number, their email address. Uh, in this case here, I'll put that, hey, they're a sheriff's deputy, great skill to, to have. Right? I'll exchange my comps uh, experience with maybe some security experience. Uh, same thing, I know a few fire and uh, medics. Uh, mechanics, you never know when you're gonna need uh, help on your car. Uh, security, I've got a bunch of prior and active service buddies. Uh, well repair, I mentioned that uh, you know we've got a bat line now to the guy who helps us when our well runs dry or when we have general plumbing issues. So this is really um, up to you to fill out, but I find it useful to have, again, kind of my top tier mutual assistance buddies uh, available if needed. And then emergency services. Uh, my list is actually a lot larger, so I have the animal hospital because we've had issues where we've got to take the uh, pets, uh, usually on a Sunday, uh, in to get some work done. Poison control, sheriff, uh, towing assistance. Again, these are really just uh, pointers for you guys to uh, put some information if you haven't given this area too much thought. Uh, I'm not gonna go into everything here, but I do wanna show you the Yesu VX6 uh, field cards, and again, this is not intended to replace the manual. It's intended to be 
Uh, just a pointer to do some very common and basic things on my everyday carry radio, which is my Yaesu VX6. So I have a six step instruction. I wanna keep these simple to program my repeater. I've got another one to save it to memory. And what I'll do is I'll print both of these and put them uh, front to back and laminate so I have a double-sided card. General MISC operations of how to do a bunch of one-liner things like get into the VFO mode, switch back to memory mode, change bands, change power. Again, you guys can put whatever you want here. I mean, I've got way more cards than I'm showing here. Um, and then how to deal with uh, memory banks. So I don't wanna to go too much farther into this one, but basically that's kind of the highlights. So key takeaways here are, these cards are easy to make in a PowerPoint or a presentation uh, software package like PowerPoint, Keynote, or Google Sheets. Uh, the sizes are pretty easy to do. Basically anything you can do in PowerPoint, you can do with this. And then my only advice is keep these simple. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what we need to do to, uh, to basically build these out. Okay, so at this point, we basically have all of our data filled in. And on that real quick, I spent probably two hours this morning working on my contact cards. I really wanted to narrow that down, make sure the information was accurate. So I would go ahead and take a look at these and really think about who's in your circle, who you wanna to talk to, what numbers are important to you, what types of information are important to you. So once you have all of this uh, in here, I typically, at least in Google's uh, slides, I like to go and do download. So we'll do a PDF download. And the reason for it, this is the easiest way I've found to print it on a Mac. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna open this in the Explorer window. And you can actually kind of see how cool it is here. We've got all the, the cards listed and we're gonna go ahead and go to our printer. And I don't have my printer connected. But uh, what you want to do is I found it best to go to copies per page and set it to six. And it has the nicest layout. And what you want to watch out for is this scale to fit. You do not want it scale to fit. You want an exact scale of a 100%. So you can see here it says uh, grayed out 111%. So we're going to hit scale and then we're going to do 100. And this is going to give you the perfect size for uh, when we go ahead and print those out. So we'll just print that out and then we'll take our trusty straight edge and our utility knife and just make sure we cut those down super cleanly. We'll go ahead and grab our laminating pouches and then it's up to you if you want to use one or two. So you either have uh, one-sided or double-sided, drop them in this pouch and I'll put links uh, down below for everything here, guys. And then all you really got to do is fire up your... Um, Laminator, this thing is amazing. It's like 25 bucks or something. And uh, just go ahead and, you know, pump them through the machine. They don't take terribly long. Now, a couple pieces of, uh, of advice that I would give you is if you're putting contact card lists, like with your family, include yourself. And the reason for it is right now we're printing basically six copies of this card for every card. So I can give one to my wife. I can give them to the neighbor. So if I, I've got the neighbor card, We'll keep a pair for us and then we'll hand it out to like four other neighbors so they have our information as well. Same thing with some of the amateur radio contacts if you guys are all in, in the same group. Actually, on that note, let's get into a few more um, tips. Also, don't go crazy. Uh, like I said, I have lots and lots of contacts. I am like limiting this to no more than 10 and I'm really prioritizing of like, who are the people that I can really count on? In terms of the instructions, I want it dead simple. Like I don't need the crazy manual where it's three pages on how to program something. Usually you can distill it into just a few uh, instructions. Um, oh, this is a good one. Where do I put these and how many do I print out for myself? Uh, I carry a sport wallet. So I have a stack in here, I think. Yeah. Let's see here. So this is my stack and it actually has all of the cards I need for contact list and field stuff. So when I go trail running, hiking, I always have this. So this is kind of my everyday carry stack and it's like the, the super set. The other thing I'll carry with me, uh, this is my kind of, not field notebook, but my EDC notebook. This thing has all of my larger SOPs. It's got uh, thumb drives, with my offline backup data, and I'll keep a copy in here. Now, not all of these cards are applicable to everything. A good example is, let's show it over here. It's like the HF card and maybe the settings for my radio on how to configure it to do things. So in my 
uh, all mode, all band uh, man pack here for my radio. I'll go ahead and put it in uh, the pouch up front and I'll just have like some amateur radio stuff. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll do another full stack and I'll put this into either my get home bag or my go bag just in case I become, you know, I've lost my wallet or something. I've got some redundancies. Hopefully you guys found this useful. Sorry for taking so long to get this video out there. It's been super busy at work. I think the next set of videos I'm gonna be doing in this Get Ready Now series because it's something I'm doing to get ready now that I've got my field cards out of the way is I'm starting to play with DMR and uh, I'm gonna be showing people how to, or how I'm getting into DMR as a traditionally analog operator. So I'm gonna take it from like first principles, show you how to do it. Uh, I think we're gonna start out with the, oh, I didn't plan this very well. Anytone 878. And unlike other people that have covered DMR, I'm not doing the hamster DMR. I'm doing the prepper DMR. There are certain capabilities in digital radio that are perfect for prepper applications. I have no interest in connecting this to the internet using a hotspot. I don't talk to random dudes. Uh, so I'm gonna show you really my philosophy and my take and take you from first principles from the analog world into DMR. And I'm gonna show you guys probably over the next three or four videos how we're gonna use this as a real freaking tool and not a toy. I'm the tech prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Oh, and big thanks to the Buy Me A Coffee guys. You guys are amazing. Thank you.